Holy shit! Okay, finally! After waiting an entire year since its first initial release date, Sonic Frontiers The Final Horizon update is finally here. Yay! And after playing through the game's growing task, I have a lot of mixed feelings about this update that I want to talk about in today's video. But first, before I actually start this video right now, if this is the first video you're watching from me, please consider subscribing to my channel as you're not going to be seeing any kind of content like this on anybody else's channel. So why not subscribe to the channel and you'll see some amazing content that you'll never seen before. But without further ado, let's get on to the review of the Final Horizon update. So as I'm one of the Sonic fans out there that actually stayed up to actually play this update, as I literally live streamed the entire time playing this update, I just want to say that I have a lot of mixed feelings about this update, and right now I just want to say straight off the bat, a lot of you guys want to know, like, what did I think about the update, as I've been playing Sonic Frontiers since day one. What do I think about the Final Horizon update? Well, I'm just gonna say straight off the bat that this update was pretty fucking amazing, but also it was really fucking horrible at the same time. L let me just explain really quickly. So, obviously, as... I'm one of the fans that actually played Sonic Frontiers since day one. I literally thought from actually fighting the Titans in the game, I actually thought that, holy shit, this game is really fucking easy. I actually wanted a challenge. Yeah, I know I was one of them that actually wanted a little bit of a challenge. And obviously, Sega, Kishimoto, I I Izuka-san, literally, they heard us loud and clear. And they were like, you know what? Let's fucking give the fans what they want. Let's give them a challenge that they'll love for a long time and they literally gave us the challenge that we wanted but holy balls that this fucking dlc was challenging as fuck like literally oh my god i struggled so many times going through the towers the trials everything in this entire fucking update was just in my opinion was really fucking punishing why the hell did it have to be this damn punishing when it comes to lack of checkpoints and just in general, just being one of the most hardest DLCs in all of Sonic history. <laughs> oh my god. Let's talk about the gameplay of this update. So we haven't gotten any Tails or Knuckles playable since Sonic 06. Because that's pretty much what the uh, entire DLC was kind of basically about, kind of, if you think about it. Like, essentially, this DLC reminded me of, like, the end of the world kind of thing from Sonic 06 where you had to play as each Sonic character going around trying to find all of the Chaos Emeralds to bring to Sonic. That's essentially what it reminds me of because that's literally what happened what happens here. So pretty much we're just playing as Amy, Tails, and Knuckles trying to collect all the Chaos Emeralds while Sonic is going through unfinished business when the man literally was just standing the whole time in this open field. I mean literally when I was playing with Soul Ninja we just found the man just chilling there but <laughs> essentially yeah i just want to like, let's just talk about let's really just talk about really quickly like how uh amy played so starting off starting up straight from the back we're, we're just playing with amy right away and holy shit i'm not gonna lie sega fucking nailed amy's character very fucking well i feel like there were so many times when i was playing with amy that she was just oh my god so fun to play with she had a freaking triple jump like she was one of the characters that jumped the highest out of all the sonic characters that we could play as in this uh dlc she was the one character that could jump really high and i just love how she was incorporated with the tarot cards now i know a lot of you guys were probably like oh my god why didn't amy just use her hammer why does it always have to be the tarot cards why is sega milking the hell out of it okay listen i didn't really have a problem with the personality change that they gave amy i mean if you're gonna do a goth amy go ahead just saying sega but like it actually felt pretty natural just playing with amy with, with, with you know her having the tarot cards and everything she had a lot of cool abilities that i wasn't really able to unlock from the very start because once you um actually play the dlc uh you do have a certain amount of skills unlocked for the characters but of course you have to get skill points to unlock the other characters and just in general even even the characters having their own skill trees is honestly one of the coolest things i've ever seen but like holy shit man I felt really, it felt really fun just playing around the island, running as Amy, and just doing all the things you would see in a Sonic game. It was just so much fun. And the fact that Amy had so many cool, cool abilities, it just really showed what Sega and Sonic Team could really do when it comes to adding playable characters in a whole 
new game. Like literally, that's what it felt like. Sonic Frontiers literally felt like a brand new game with all these characters being included. And that was so fun to just mess around with. It was it was just amazing. So I just want to say, like I said, yeah, Amy, one one hundred percent one of my favorite characters to play as in this entire DLC. I feel like she felt perfect in my opinion. And there was just nothing wrong with her, really, in my opinion. But yeah, uh, let's switch over to your boy Knuckles. And I just want to say really quickly that transition from Amy to Knuckles and the music playing. Holy shit. I mean, you can literally hear my voice. I was excited when just seeing that moment happen. Just listen, bro. Emerald. Knuckies! Knuckies, hello? Yes, we're gonna play Knuckles! Let's go, I'm excited. Hell yeah, brother, we're Knuckles now! Holy shit, one of my best favorite transitions ever in this fucking game. But yeah, obviously after finally switching to Knuckles, I was truly excited because it was going to feel exactly like Sonic Adventure 2, how Knuckles played, and it was, oh my god, I was really excited for Knuckles, really. But unfortunately, when it comes to actually getting a hands-on gameplay with Knuckles, I just want to quickly say that I was generally disappointed with Knuckles' gameplay. What? What the fuck? And I know it's so upsetting to say that because Knuckles is, in my opinion, one of my most favorite characters in all of the Sonic series. So just being able to play with him again in a game since fucking Sonic 06 is just insanity. But like, when I actually played with Knuckles, it just, it felt disappointing. Just want to point it out really quickly right now. So this is the problem with Knuckles and I feel like Sega could hopefully improve with Knuckles in the future. One thing was, Every time you would glide with Knuckles, he would pause in the air. And that was really repetitive and annoying because like, in Sonic Adventure 2, Knuckles literally would just go straight to gliding. No pause whatsoever. And that's what I loved about Knuckles in Sonic Adventure 2. Here, he just paused every fucking time you wanted to glide and it also messed up a lot of platforming part sections with Knuckles when I was playing with him. Like, I felt like I, I, I just kept dying over and over again just because of how repetitive the, the gliding could be because like you know this is how the the gameplay is supposed to go knuckles has a double jump and then he initiates a glide but sometimes when i'm doing some like platforms like for example if knuckles were to jump on its spring it literally cancels out the double jump and it, it was so repetitive and annoying because i couldn't fucking reach a platform that i needed to reach because just why did it why did a spring disable his double jump in the first place like i don't understand why he has to pause in the air every time so i just wanted to immediately nitpick about that and i just really hope they improve with knuckles in the future now another thing that i was generally excited about as well which i feel like a lot of people thought this was actually going to be the case in the game but it turns out it's not the case at all was when it comes to playing as knuckles you would think he would be able to climb just pretty much anything in the game but it turns out Knuckles can only climb certain sections in the game. And it would have been really awesome to just see Knuckles climb pretty much everything. That's what made Knuckles so fun in the first place. Like, just being able to glide around the map and climb pretty much anything. That's what was enjoyable about Knuckles. But be him being only the only Sonic character that can climb just certain parts in the map just really upset me because it would have been awesome just climbing everything, dude. That's what we know Knuckles for. He's an echidna. He's supposed to climb pretty much anything. Like, you see this motherfucker climbing in fucking Sky Sanctuary in the prologue trailer. So why is he only limited to certain parts in the map? Really don't understand it, but... Yeah, I feel like... Yeah, but I feel like also um, his combat was okay. Like, it, it was pretty cool. Just having the, um, the drill as his, like, main boost ability, like... That was kind of sick because you would be able to actually go really fucking fast with Knuckles once you actually unlock it and actually use it to its full extent. Like you would be able to go pretty quick. Like I can't even I can't even imagine how quick it will be once you unlock the spin dash. Which I'm one of those people who haven't unlocked the spin dash yet, but I will be I will unlock it after this video is over. But yeah, Knuckles I would say is is pretty solid from the most part. But I would really appreciate it. If Sega would literally update Knuckles and make it so he doesn't pause in the air because it it was kind of annoying and I, I didn't really like it. I I know a lot of people were okay with Knuckles' gliding, but I didn't really like it. And oh my god, I, I can't believe I almost forgot to mention this about Knuckles. When gliding with Knuckles, his turning radius is so bad. Like holy shit, he 
he turns like a motherfucking truck, bro. So literally, there were parts where there were gliding sections when it, when it, when playing with Knuckles, and just turning with Knuckles in general, like really did fuck me over from time to time because like it like when I wanted to turn uh like just slightly, it's just like I don't know. It's just something about it. It's just his turning is so bad. Like I, I don't like it. Like Knuckles controlled so well in Sonic Adventure 2, and this was a complete dumpster fire when it comes to Knuckles turning and gliding. It's just, oh my God, why? Like, why did you, why did you butcher my boy like that? <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 I just want to say, yeah, it wasn't too bad, but I just want Sega to improve on Knuckles in the future. That's just something I, I only want to say about Knuckles. But now let's talk about your boy Tails, Miles Tails Prower. Now. I just want to say straight off the bat, Tails is probably one of the most fun characters I have played with in this entire update. Now, I know, no, uh, I will say this, that he's not perfect. He is not perfect. There are a few flaws with Tails, but in my opinion, I felt like Tails, in my opinion, was actually pretty fine to me. It, it just felt so fun playing with him. So, like, obviously straight off the bat, obviously Tails being the fox with the two tails, you would think, you would be like, okay, he's gonna, in this game, he's going to obviously be able to fly. Yes, he can fly, but what makes it so bizarre, in my opinion, is that Tails can't, like, you can't fly up. Like, once you fly with Tails, he pretty much is stuck at a certain limit. So, he pretty much just flies up, and then he stops. He stops there. So, you're not able to make Tails ascend more, he just pretty much stops at a certain point, but it is pretty funny that I'm able to finesse with Tails from time to time, because like, sure, yeah, he could fly up to a certain point, but I felt like when I was platforming on certain parts of the map, I was able to finesse the hell out of the game where if I were to jump on one platform and then continue flying, then yeah, Tails would be able to fly higher. And that was so good because I was able to pretty much finesse and skip a bunch of sections that were in the game, which made me be able to speedrun practically the entire section with Tails. So that's something that I really loved when it comes to playing with Tails. But God, I, 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 I would have loved if Tails would have been able to ascend higher and higher. And of course, playing as Tails, you already know that Sega had to do it. They had to make him get tired, which I'm okay with. But like, it would have been insane if Tails would have been able to like fly forever. But yeah, just thinking about it now, I feel like yeah, it would have been a little bit OP. So I, I, I see why Sega did that. And now let's talk about the, the thing that's really annoying when it comes to playing at these care with these characters is that. Tails is the only damn character that doesn't have a homing attack. Why? Why? Like, you've seen Tails do pretty much anything Sonic can do, but why is Tails the only character in this entire update that cannot homing attack? And if you're gonna make it so Tails can't homing attack, then why the hell were there times where I would go up to an object, he would have a homing attack marker around an object? If he doesn't have a homing attack, then why even put it in the game in the first place? Like, I swear, there were so many times where I wanted a homing attack with Tails, but I couldn't because I was so used to playing with Sonic and the others that I realized that he doesn't have a homing attack in the first place. And it's just upsetting to me, just making it feel like Tails is probably one of the most useless characters to play as, but all you pretty much gave him was just a wrench attack. He throws wrenches. Sega, why? Why do you do this to my boy Tails, bro? He's he's not, he's far from useless. He had a whole fucking character arc in the base game saying how he wanted to be none other than just being a useless character to, to the freaking team. But then when you don't give him a homing attack, that's where I draw the line. But yeah, from the most part, I yeah, I did enjoy playing as Tails. Now, I just want to say really quickly, the Cyclone. The Cyclone from Sonic Adventure 2. The fact that Sega brought it back and gave it to Tails was so fucking awesome. When I unlocked it for the first time and being able to fly pretty much everywhere on the map, top 10 fucking amazing thing that Sega could add for Tails. I'm so glad that they did that. Well, honestly, there were so many times I had so much fun just flying around the entire map with Tails' Cyclone. And the fact that he was able to shoot in the Cyclone, holy shit, oh my god, dude. Tails is probably one of the most fun characters to play as in this entire update. No fucking joke. 
But now that we moved on from the characters, now it's time to talk about the grueling task of this entire update. And what do I mean by grueling tasks? Oh yeah, I'll tell you why. So, obviously, I thought it was just going to be us playing as Tails, Knuckles, and Amy. But, the, but it turns out we're actually going to be able to play as Sonic in this update as well. So, when playing as Sonic, he has a few certain sections that actually kind of piss me the hell off. For example, uh, Sage says that we would that we needed to scale four master towers in the entire game, so that way we can embrace the cyber corruption and turn that into power, which is kind of how Sonic got his new form, which, yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention this at the very beginning. Yeah, this is spoilers, by the way, for anyone who hasn't played the update, so please, I highly recommend you play this update before watching this video. But pretty much, we have to scale four towers and do the grueling task in order to get the new power for Sonic. So, um, I just want to say right now, who the fuck designed the first tower? Who designed the first tower? Because my god, the first tower was so annoying! There were so many times where I fucking fell all the way to the goddamn bottom. And if you guys don't remember from my first review on Sonic Frontiers, when we went to Rhea Island and we had to scale all of those towers, I was so fucking thankful that Sega made it so if we fell from a certain point of the tower, they would add a little pulley which would bring you back to that point in the, in the tower and you would be able to continue on going up the tower. But this one is so brutal and punishing. If you fall from the tower, I'm just gonna say it right now. <clears throat> if you fall straight down from the tower, there is no pulley. Meaning you have to start from the very bottom all the way to the top. So if you fuck up, you go down and then you have to go right back up the tower. And that's what made me so fucking pissed off. Because I literally thought Sega was going to be generous with us for this tower. Like, when I saw the towers returning, I was like, Sega, please do what you did with Rhea Island. And it turns out that they made it so much more punishing to us that we have to scale the tower all the way again if we fall once. And oh my god, <laughs> it was so annoying. But it wasn't so bad. Because after I got the hang of the, you know, the platforming with Sonic, I was able to make it to the top and I was going to do these trials. Now, the first trial wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. All you had to do was, of course, attack, um, you know, the basic enemies that we had back in the base game. I felt like that was pretty easy, so I didn't really have to, you know, struggle against that one. But the ones, but the two difficult trials that I want to talk about that pissed me the hell off were... <sighs> So, the two trials that I hated was the Snakes trial and the Master King Coco trial. I'm not going to talk about the Master King Coco trials yet. Let me talk about the Snake trial. So, I just want to say really quickly, how the fuck was anybody supposed to know what we were supposed to do? So, for the Snake trial, we have two minutes. And we have to take out four of these ginormous beast enemies that we had back in the base game. Obviously, the way you're supposed to do it is you're supposed to side loop around the enemy... And then, once the shell pretty much jumps off from the from the enemy, that's when Sonic is able to attack the enemy. Here, it's more brutal. Because even if you side loop the shell off of the enemy, the shell immediately goes back down. Meaning you will waste so much time just constantly side looping it. And that's the problem, because side loop is the only ability you have with Sonic. And what makes things even worse is they put your ass back in level 1. I'm not kidding. They put you right back at level 1, meaning all the stats that you worked really hard for for Sonic won't even matter because you will just be at level 1. So, as I was playing it for practically, I believe, an hour of trying to figure out how to beat that mission, I figured out that this is the only way to pretty much beat this trial. So, what you need to do is you pretty much have to finesse the enemy by going far back from the enemy and waiting for it to launch its shell at you. Then, you're supposed to homing attack into the enemy, and as the shell is going to come back towards Sonic, you need to parry the shell away and then keep attacking the enemy. That is the only known way to beating this trial, and it took me so many fucking tries to even do it, because I kept failing over and over again, and it was just so repetitive and annoying, but I got the hang of it and I was able to beat it. And that was the end of the trial. Now let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about the Master King's Coco's trial. The one that 
caused the most controversy with this entire update. And I've literally seen hundreds of comments of people saying that this is probably one of the most hardest trials in the entire game. But me being the pro gamer that I am, I was surprised that I was able to actually beat it on hard mode. And I'm honestly, and I honestly, it felt kind of worth doing it. But at the same time, I, was, I, I, I didn't even realize that you were able to change the difficulty. Like, I could have changed the difficulty this entire time and probably not wasted so many of my hours playing that trial. And you guys want to know how many, how many fucking hours that took for me to beat that trial? I'm going to tell you right now. Nine fucking hours. It took me nine hours to beat that entire fucking trial. And it was ridiculous. Holy shit. Let me tell you how this trial goes. So essentially how this trial goes is you're going to be fighting all of the fucking titans from the base game. All of them. I'm talking Giganto, the Wyvern, and the Knight. But not Supreme because obviously that is at the end and that is the final boss for this update. So you have to refight all of those titans again. And obviously I usually fight those titans a lot because, you know, I am a man that plays boss rush a lot. But god damn that they make this so punishing and hard. So this is what they do. They put your ass at level 1. Literally no max stats for Sonic whatsoever. Your ass is in fact at level 1. And the only ability you have when it comes to fighting these titans is the perfect parry. And you guys are like, what is the perfect parry? Essentially what the perfect parry is, you know how the parry has kind of like a 15 second like delay when it went, would play in, uh, the base game of Sonic Frontier? Instead, they freaking lowered the delay of the parry to like five seconds so literally even if you try to hold the parry with sonic he's going to immediately release meaning you're going to have to time your parry perfectly to actually hit the attacks against the titans and there were so many fucking times where i fucking struggled with the perfect parry like giganto being one of the easiest titans in the entire game was literally bumped up to like a 10,000. He was probably one of the most toughest out of all the other Titans, but not really because I want to talk about <laughs> fighting the Wyvern and the Wyvern was probably the most annoying Titan because he's the one that involves you having to actually parry in order to beat the Titan. You have to obviously parry the rockets into the Titan and then once the Titan is going to swing its tail at you, you're supposed to parry and block that, and that's when you're actually able to attack it. But the Wyvern being so fucking fast made it so hard to actually time the perfect parry as much as you can. Like, is this all like a new system that Sega made, especially for this update? Because I felt like the perfect parry, there were times where the perfect parry actually hit, and there were times where the perfect parry did not hit. And it was so annoying. I saw so many YouTubers struggle against this update. I mean, I saw fucking Remy fucking rage quit against this. Sorry, Remy, but it looks like I was able to beat the DLC pretty easily <laughs> for nine hours. I apologize, Remy. I love you, bro. But when I was watching Sam's stream, surprisingly, he actually beat it, but he struggled a lot. And I mean, a lot of YouTubers struggled against this trial. I mean, even Fidel literally quit the DLC until the next day to try again. Like, holy shit. I felt so bad for all these YouTubers. Like, oh my god, why did they... I, I swear, what would have been so good was if Sega could have just at least added either checkpoints, like, at least add checkpoints. Like, it, like for example, if you beat one Titan, at least you'll be able to try again against a Titan. I had to try again so many times going through the Titans over and over again and going through the unskippable cutscenes. Like, it was, it was so annoying, but after finally beating it, it felt so fucking good to actually beat that DLC. I'm actually going to post a separate video of me beating the Coco Trial because I want you guys to see my glorious reaction after beating that update. But yeah, let's move on. After beating the Trial, then you would finally get the new power for Sonic, meaning it was time for you to proceed to the final battle. Now, I was fucking, I was fucking scared because I had no idea how hard this update was going to be. I mean, from all the grueling tasks, I couldn't even imagine how insane Supreme was going to fucking be. So, I just decided to swallow my, my gut and decided, fuck it, we're gonna go in and take on the final battle. So, after going through the final battle, we obviously see Sage and she asks Sonic if, uh, were you successful? And of course, Sonic, being the cocky bastard that he is, he was like, 
naturally. <laughs> and then, pretty much, it was time for the final battle. And just seeing all of the characters, like, enduring the cyber corruption, it really hurt my heart. Like, seeing Amy getting hurt from the corruption, it really, really hurt it. Like, literally from seeing Sonic going through all that pain, seeing the other characters going through the pain of the cyber corruption as well, literally hurt me of being uh, as being of so of being a massive Sonic fan that I am. But obviously after all the characters have gone to Chaos Emeralds, it was time for us to take on Supreme and its final glory. And of course, once you actually go into the final battle, you can see that the Supreme battle, the, like the normal Supreme Titan battle, is still the same how it was in the base game. I didn't see any differences, but if there were any differences, then please let me know in the comments. But uh, yeah, phase one was pretty much the same thing from the base game, and he was pretty fucking easy. Once you actually use the cross slash, or in my opinion, use the cross slash, at its full extent, it is one of the best moves. It does so much damage. I was able to beat the Supreme Titan, and then that's when it was time for us to see the brand new version of the Supreme Boss. And <clears throat> holy shit, this was fucking awesome, in my opinion. So instead of having Sage normally go into the Supreme Titan and us going into space to take on the end, the fucking end pulls up from space. It pulls up to fucking earth and says nah bitch i'ma fuck you guys over <laughs> and he literally latches a fucking cord whatever the fuck it was he latches it into the supreme titan like this is fucking invagelion he fucking said nah i'm about to destroy all of you because i am the ultimate being and i was fucking afraid of what was happening but then after seeing fucking supreme doing the headbanger emote from fucking fortnite it just knows that this is the true finale for Sonic Frontiers. And then the final the final battle begins. So now we just fight we're just fighting Supreme literally on his hands and knees. He is literally on the ground and he, he looks fucking menacing as fuck. And just me actually fighting the Supreme Titan, just listening to Kellen fucking singing I'm here. Oh my god, this revamped version of I'm here is just amazing. I know I love the original so much, but Kellen singing I'm Here, oh my god, just so beautiful. Just listen to how awesome this shit fucking sounds.
Sonic being the ultimate badass that he is, he fucking does one of the moves from the comics, by the way. If you're not, if, if, literally, if you, if you don't know this, this part, this part was literally in the Metal Virus. So, it would make sense for them to recreate this, because Ian Flynn, being the ultimate awesome dude that he is, of course he was the one that righted Sonic Frontiers. Of course they had to throw in that thing into the fucking update, and holy shit, it was so epic. Just seeing Sonic being the ultimate anime badass that he is like it even reminds me of the time when fucking ultra instinct goku literally does that one move against jiren it was so fucking anime and godlike and i loved it bro as i was fighting the final boss i felt like there were certain parts in that entire boss fight that was so hard but then there was this one part that popped up where sonic literally had to dodge this ginormous orb that the supreme titan launches at sonic and I literally thought this was going to be a quick time event where we were supposed to mash square and, I don't know, shoot it back at the Supreme Titan. But then after seeing Sonic, Sonic's eyes revert back, it seems like the power was getting zapped right out of him. And literally after I saw Sonic change back from, from his super form to his base form, he gets fucking launched back and he starts losing all of his rings. And I literally thought that it was fucking over for us. Like literally seeing his rings getting knocked out. I was like, oh shit, I fucked up. I, I think I'm dead. But then this man, this man fucking Sonic, flies in the air with the emeralds. He's like, you know what? That's it. I still got more in me, bro. Now I'll show you. And, and he fucking goes right back into the super form. And he said, it's fucking Jover. It's Jover for your bitch ass. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Um, Let me continue with the review. So once you do all of that shit, Pretty much, Supreme is fucking done. He is fucking done. You're gonna launch this man into the fucking air, and then Eggman saying, Sonic, it's now or never. He goes into the cannon, literally doing a- pulling a Sonic X, by the way. I thought he was gonna do the fucking Sonic Power Cannon. He fucking embraces the cyber corruption, and then we finally get a glimpse at Cyber Sonic in all of his glory. He gets shot out of the gun. He goes fucking- he goes fucking feral on the Supreme Titan with the fangs. Literally, that is such a cool detail right there that Sonic even gets fangs. He goes right through the end and then he blows it up. And it was such a beautiful sight just to see the end blowing up. And just seeing Sonic damaged, oh my god, man. That just shows how insane that, that fucking form was for him. Like, literally, the man was damaged from all that. But then after finally beating the end, Sonic falls all the way straight down, and that was it for Sonic Frontiers, the Final Horizon update. Me being the fan that I am, playing from the very start, was just one hell of a roller coaster ride for all of us. I cannot believe that they were able to rewrite the story and make it so fucking beautiful. I can officially say that Sonic Frontiers had the perfect yeah, ending, I'm and I, I'm just so glad that this game is so beloved by the entire Sonic community. I just want to say thank you to Izuka, Kishimoto, Ian Flynn, everybody at Sega Team. Thank you so much for making this game reality. And anyways, guys, I'm going to wrap up this video here. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Goodbye, everybody. in the sky All the times that I spent by your side Taught me love And taught me pain Things that I